Popping Norcos. I've popped Norcos before. It was never my drug of choice, but if you don't know, Norcos are hydrocodone. It is an opiate. It is highly addictive, and it is something that is prescribed by many doctors to treat pain. I did abuse this drug. It was never my drug of choice. It was never massively abused like I did with alcohol and cocaine, but I did abuse Norcos, and this is what it was like. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Being in sales all my life, uh, I abused a lot of different drugs out there. I wouldn't necessarily say like I'm a huge poly addict because... Norcos were something that I would only abuse at certain times, and they're typically during RV shows. Norcos are a hydrocodone. It's a painkiller, and the effects of it are pretty much to nullify the pain. It's something that if you're in an accident, you typically get prescribed an opiate. Uh, opiates are there to just pretty much help you heal and not feel that pain as much and actually function as an adult. Unfortunately, if you're like me and most others, you're going to abuse it because you're an addict and hey, but hey, it happens. Now, what it was like taking Norcos, I would take one Norco a day during RV shows. Uh, a lot of times you're on your feet all day long, your feet hurt, you're talking to a lot of people and you always kind of got to this point, and that's the thing that always sucked some about sales, is you wanted to kind of numb it all. You get hit with a lot of no's, you get hit with a lot of rejection, and it does play a little bit of tricks on your brain. Well, the more that you numb that, the more that you don't care. So very common during RV shows where a lot of people would pop Norco. So it was easy, easy, easy to get. And that was one of the unfortunate things about it. A lot of times people that are addicted to things like Norcos or hydrocodone or any kind of, just any kind of opiate out there, if you can't afford it, you end up switching over to heroin because heroin is also really easy to get and it hits those same brain receptors as a uh, opiate does. Now, popping these, I pop these because, well, I self-medicated. Uh, I would be at RV shows. By usually the first, second day, you're on your feet nonstop. You're on concrete, going in and out, up and down, up and down, in and out, talking to a ton of people. Your body starts to hurt. You feel it in your lower back. And I would always know what salesman to go to, and I'd be like, hey, hook it up. And I would end up popping Norco a day. It would stay in my system for pretty much a good six hours is what I would notice it for. And what the effects were that I felt is, one, my body would go kind of numb. Like, I, I wouldn't feel any pain. Uh, one is all that it took. I never really built up a tolerance because I was more fascinated with drinking and cocaine than I was any kind of like Norco or any kind of opiate or pill popping. And I always looked at pills a little bit differently. And even in my brain, I justified it at shows of, hey, I'm in a lot of pain. This is going to help me. It'll help me push you through. So I would justify it just like any addict does. And I would end up popping one of these. And it would take away all the pain. I could walk, it seemed like, for hundreds of miles. No pain in my legs at all. And it also gave me an increased energy. That was always the dangerous thing with anything that I took. I would feel this increased energy. I would feel the increased mood. My mood would be better. I'd have no problem with objections. I'd have no problem talking to people. You're talking to a ton of strangers. No problem. It overcomes all your anxiety, all your depression. It made it all go away. And it put you just in this great mood. And I would usually end up drinking with it, which is not one of the best combinations to do. And it was one that I wanted to do it nonstop especially at just shows because it allowed me to where I didn't feel anything and I could just go talk to anybody. And a huge one was the energy. I'm ADHD, so when I take an Adderall, the stimulants have an opposite effect. So I could drink a ton of caffeine and it still necessarily wouldn't give me all the energy. Popping a Norco, though, would. It would actually fool my brain, trick my brain, release the dopamine. I'm out there. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling wonderful. I'm laughing. I'm giggling. And I'm having a good time. And that's one of the things that I know that attracts a lot of people to it. And then we make up this whole reasoning of why we can't get off of these. Because if I get off of these, my body is going to hurt. I'm going to be in pain. You are. I mean, if you're going through withdrawals, you have obviously taken too many. Or we have a really addictive personality. And it's a difficult drug to get off of. For me, thankfully, I never got too hooked on it. Where I would only pop one a day. I never overdid it. Mainly because after about six hours, by that time I was drinking. And I didn't care about any pills. I wanted to drink. So I'm drinking, I'm doing cocaine, and that's where my brain would end up shifting to. And it wasn't popping more pills. But when I would take them, I would feel just on top of the world. It was more of an invincible feeling than what cocaine was for me because my body didn't hurt at all. With cocaine, I was focused really on my mouth. I was focused on my body. I could feel everything kind of tighten up. And with a Norco, everything went kind of limp into the point of like, hey, you could like punch me with a fucking bag of bricks and I'm not going to feel it. Like, it, it felt invincible. I felt like I could walk. I, I felt, you know, no need to stretch out or anything. I got this. And no problem doing it. Along with how it made my brain feel of, I'm on top of the world. I'm in a good mood. I definitely saw what attracted people to it. 
it is a hard drug to kick. I mean, anybody out there struggling, you know when you start to get addicted to things and that next thing you know that, well, I got prescribed 30 of them and all 30 are gone in four days and wonder why. And it is hard because drugs like that, we build a tolerance to. And I, I'm always afraid of even with my Adderall building a tolerance to it. So I don't take Adderall on the weekends because I don't want that tolerance level. I want the drug to work as it's supposed to work. Not have to continually increase and increase and increase the amounts that I take. And opiates are something that you actually do build a tolerance to. So you're taking more and more for the same effect. I never got past one pill a day for it would usually be seven days straight that I would take them. And getting off of them, I, because it was not a ton, and also probably because I drank a lot too, I never felt any withdrawals to it. I would feel like kind of body aches the, the next day, two days. And I would just blame it on, oh, I just got done with this RV show. My body is hurting. I'm trying to recoup from it. My body's just healing itself. And I would just drink away the pain. And it would kind of numb it all. I never noticed then any kind of withdrawals from it. And if I would have noticed withdrawals from it, I, odds are I would have probably ended up wanting to pop more and more and more. Because it was it was kind of a get rid of it all pill. And I see the attraction to it. I just could never get on that pill bandwagon of wanting to take more and more pills. And so I always just defaulted back to the alcohol, the coke, and just getting high the way that I enjoyed getting high not by taking a pill. If you are struggling out there though, I get the struggle. I get that just wanting it all to go away, making it all feel numb, making it all feel good. And that's why down below in the description, I do have links to A and NA. That's what got me sober. I mean... I had a battle and a half with alcohol and cocaine. It was a it was a beast and it was a huge fight. And it was something that, it was hard. It was a hard, hard fight, but I made it through it. And you can make it through it too. You're not alone. A lot of times we feel alone. And looking back at all my friends and everybody who I was close to that popped these pills, I felt for them. And I had a lot of spouses even at different times reach out to me going, can you help my husband? Can you help my partner out? Because they're hooked to this. And I knew they were. I mean, you're buying them and you just don't stop using them. It, next thing you know, people are asking you for them and you're like, dude, I, it's not even, I'm not even using them, but I know dealers, I'll get you some. It's a fight. That's what addiction is though. And addiction is that battle. Anybody out there going through it, man, my heart goes out to you, but you can do it. It, it was it's something that I can see the addiction side of it. I can see how people would get addicted to it because Especially if you're in any kind of pain, it does screw with your mental health. It screws with your depression. It screws with you just knowing that you're not functioning like a normal human being or what you think is a normal human being and you want to be normal. And when we get addicted to drugs like that, it makes us feel normal. So I get that fight and believe me, you can make it through it. It is a battle, but you can make it through it. Looking back, I'm thankful I never really got hooked on the Norcos to the point that it was something that, next thing you know, hydrocodone is my best friend and I got to get more, I got to get more, I got to get more. Unfortunately, I went the opposite route though and it went alcohol and cocaine. I needed to get more, needed to get more, needed to get more and it became just a battle that was one that thankfully we can all win if we want it bad enough. So if you're out there struggling, I mean, Norcos, it numbed it all. It numbed it all, made me feel invincible, but it, in the end, it wasn't worth it. And I'm glad that I ended up getting sober from it because I would have went down a route that many go down and been hooked to it, especially looking back at what it was like with Kratom. If I was in a sober mindset of trying to get sober off of an opiate, I can see the difficulty and the want to relapse, the need to almost relapse, the need to make it stop, the need to make that body ache stop, the, the leg shake stop. Nobody talks about the leg shakes. That's a nightmare and the twitching to stop hot and cold sweats you're just inside dripping sweat and you walk outside and you're shivering and you need a blanket it's a fight but let people know that you're struggling there is lots of different alternatives out there that to taper off or suboxone just fight it's worth it it gets better and i can't stress that enough to anybody out there struggling that it gets better so if you're out there and you're fighting with it you know what you got this